physical and mental abilities to an amazing level. Provided, of course, that they have enough money. A new breed of people will be going over there, after living, after seeing them. Troy believes that not everyone is happy to see them. I just landed a job as head of security at Zaraf Industries, a cutting edge biotech firm. David Sarif himself handpicked me for the job, said he needed me to keep his people safe. My ex, Megan Lee, a woman, brilliant neuroscientist, Megan had founded an augmentation of safety and affordable for everyone. All she had to do was present her research to Congress. But the night before her big meeting, my security match failed. A team of black op mercenaries stormed into Sarah's headquarters as if they were going to get inside. Three of the Musk were heavily armed and walked in tanks. Their mission? Take out Megan and her team. I tried to stop them, but their leader tossed me to the three times for one. One thing I heard was his bullet slam into my mind and pulled Megan's gun on the string. I should have died then. I didn't. High-end military-grade enhancements have saved my life. The best augmentation Sarah's money could buy. Took me half a year to get a deal for it. Should have taken longer. But six months into my recovery, Sarah Industries was attacked again. This time, by a radical group of pro-human purists. Violent, militant, and fanatically opposed to human augmentation, they claim to be members of Humanity First, a non-profit organization that wanted the UN to limit biotechnology research. Thugs broke into Sarah's factory and found machinists working overtime on a top secret military artery of the Black Queen. Sarah sent me to the retreat. And when I did, I found one of the so called purists next to it, wired with cerebral implants, trying to get his classified specs. Obviously, something more was going on. The ARB killed himself before he could question me. Sarah ordered me to dig deeper. So with the help of Frank Pritchard, Sarah's head of cybersecurity, I did. Turns out a second hacker had been controlling the Ogs' actions from somewhere off site. Pritchard and I tracked his secret female internment camp in Detroit. The Black Op mercenaries were there. The same mercs who'd left me for dead six months before. Figured he'd try again when he saw me. Wasn't so easy for him this time. I took out the tank. house apartment in China. Of course, we both knew it would be a trap in the end. Tensha Island, China. Home to a city so crowded, they had to build a second city on top of it. Trying to find clues in Hensha wouldn't be easy. Lucky for me, there wasn't a map. Karita Malik, the retreat-based pilot, had lived in Hensha before good person to have on your side. She knew enough about the death toll to be alert. Malik dropped me in the lower city, close to the penthouse barracks the building were. Bell Tower Associates, a private security firm contracted the Chinese government, had agents toss me a sweet when I arrived. This job could look like a hard spin. It turns out the man who lived there, a criminal hacker named Nick, the same hacker who'd been remotely controlling the arm in Sarah's factory. Decision forced the man to commit suicide. He did it instead. Now his mercenary partner is preparing for him. Now you have to find him if you're Vegan. Locating Van Drugen meant playing nice with the triads, Hensha Vegan and his crime lords. They had the hacker holed outside an all-red capsule hotel. Apparently, Van Drugen had no qualms hooking up to Vegan and hiding him. Zhao Yunlu, president of the Taiyang Medical Corporation. According to Van Drugen, Zhao wanted to monopolize the augmentation industry and had hired Black Op mercenaries to destabilize their competition. Sarah Industries was at the top of their list. To do this, I needed to get inside TYA and grab a surveillance hologram off the server. I suspected Van Drugen was hiding something at the totem base, but nothing could have prepared me for what I saw. Megan must be dead. She and the four best researchers I could kidnap. 
spirited away somewhere before they were kidnapped again and looked like they were dead. Desperate to learn more, I confronted Zhao in her penthouse. She claimed to be a pawn in a bigger plan and hinted at a group so powerful it controlled global interests at a whim. Then she slipped into a panic mode and hit the alarm, forcing me to make a very quick exit. I figured Zhao was right. Part of her confession made sense. David Sands had been worried about his people. So worried, he'd required all of them to have subthermal locator devices surgically implanted. The GPLs were even broadcasting the the attack. If Zhao sent a single call to Pikus, the world would have been on global and four hour satellite news. I could blow up Sigmund's world. I needed to fly to Pikus headquarters. Isaac Kassan, Pikus Communications First Lady of News. Malik thought I would reach her when I told her that Isaac was involved in this. The world's most famous news anchor working with a mercenary hit squad. But when I confronted Kassan's office, she freely admitted to jamming Detroit satellites the night Megan's team had been taken. Said she had just been following her commands. I suspected she wanted to see more. But black op mercenaries showed up and got Shine's boat down. And just like that, the lies I had been hunting disappeared. The mercs were led by an augmented killer I crossed paths with twice before. Then Aloha. A woman who'd made silence her best friend. She waited for me to track Eliza's transmission to a secret server room underneath the Pikus complex. Then jumped in from behind. A deadly fight ensued. I'm sure she never Fed her over down, and no one left to keep Eliza quiet. She disappeared. Turns out Pikus's first lady of news wasn't a lady at all. She was a sophisticated AI program, engineered to monitor data streams and control what went to the wind. Eliza told me the Mercs had brought in a command and front doctor named Isaiah Sandoval to remove the scientist implanted tracking while Detroit satellites were down. She also told me to speak to David Sarah about Megan. By the time Malik and I got back to Detroit, tensions between normal and augmented citizens had reached a flashpoint. Riots were breaking out in several cities, and the UN was being urged to intervene. Sarah was trying hard to convince Hugh Dow, the inventor turned philanthropist who'd once been a leading proponent of enhancement technologies, to help stop a possible regulatory vote. Sarif had a lot riding on Dow. Megan's discovery would have given millions of people a chance to evolve beyond their normal human abilities, and at the same time, catapulted Sarif Industries to the top of the Fortune 500. According to Sarif, Megan's kidnap would mean this. He didn't want people evolving unless they controlled how it got done. He called his enemy a little known and urged me to keep searching. Determined to do so, I tracked down Sandoval via America's most outspoken organization opponent, Bill Tiger, Sandoval's boss and founder of Humanity Front. Sandoval admitted to operating Megan's team when confronted, but said he hadn't removed their GPLs. He'd merely switched them to a different frequency. Pritchard was able to trace one signal to China. Malik and I immediately took off in pursuit. Unfortunately, sky like outdoor associates seconds after entering anxious airspace. Malik's pilot had said the same. After a tense and bitter struggle, I escaped with the bar Asia. The tracking signal I was following led straight to Triangles, or more specifically, to the augmented arm of Tong Si Hung, leader of a gang of augmentation harvesters. Tong said they'd taken the arm off a corpse, which bell towers left with their door. They slipped aboard a bell tower ship. They were sailing to Rifleman Bank Station, a military base by the South China Sea. Bell Tower was holding kidnapped civilians as prisoners there, and 
using them to perfect the Hyrule project, a human-computer interface that left most of its testing bits finished. My search for Megan would have ended there, if not for a mysterious ally named Quinn. In exchange for my help exposing Bell Tower, he slipped me aboard a second ship headed to Singapore, and an Illuminati run biotech facility in the middle of the channel. Three of Seraph's scientists were there, forced by their captors to create a technology capable of remotely shutting down augmented abilities. Thanks to an emergency recall notice issued by the World Health Organization, millions of people all over the world already had the biochip installed. With the help of the scientists, I tracked Megan to a private section of the bridge. There, I ran into Yaron Lemire, who had walked in a tank who put a bullet in the door to take down the mill. He'd teamed up with Zhao and was hoping to catch me off guard. A little ambush didn't work. I found Megan in a suite belonging to Hugh Darrow, the billionaire philanthropist who'd Sarah had called up for help. Darrow had convinced her to go along with the biochip plan by promising to sabotage the tech. As she was explaining this, Darrow appeared in the daily broadcast, telling the world that augmentations would be the death of mankind. Then he activated the biochips to prove his point. All over the world, augmented people flew into a chilling frenzy. Darrow had betrayed everyone, and it was up to me to set things right. To do it, I had to reach Panchea, a massive ocean world in Oceania. As I raced through corridors built by an all-augmented workforce, I saw death and destruction firsthand. By the time I shut down Darrow's broadcast, I knew the damage he'd done. Still, humanity's future remained unclear. How would the world react to this sabotage? Would people ever regain their faith in augmentations again? What would be the Illuminati's next move? Only time will give us the answers. Sometimes, you just have to let go, and embrace what you've become. Not gonna go all wonky on us now, Hansa, are ya? Well, if I do, McCready, I guarantee you'll never see it coming. Agent Jensen, am I gonna have a problem with you? No, sir. No reason to assume you would. Good, because you are the only augmented operative on the team. And I intend to make good use of you. Listen up, all of you. We've got a sandstorm barreling down our ass, and we can't afford to make mistakes. We're going after this man, an arms dealer named Shepard. He's ex-Bell Tower, one of the special forces commanders who disappeared during the incident. And he's come out of hiding. That cannot be it. It's not. He's selling weapons and military-grade augments to terrorists. This is Iran Singh, the undercover agent who lures Shepard out of his hole. Best you see Interpol's got. For three years he's worked hard to get in tight with the Jinn, an Iraqi smuggling cartel that's infected the Eastern Hemisphere like a plague. Last week, our arms dealer sent a message to the Jinn, offering to sell them a shitload of black market merchandise dirt cheap. They told Singh that by 
You're not gonna like it when Interpol disrupts that party. Is things cover really that good? It is right now. We need to keep it that way. This is where the deal's going down. A half-finished high-rise hotel that's been abandoned ever since the incident. It's not a pretty picture inside. Let me guess. My laborers were augmented with duty industrial rigs. So when the incident hit and they all went schizo, things got gruesome real fast. And no one, except for some homeless junkies, have been inside the place ever since. What's the plan, Director? Singh's meeting Shepard on the ground floor, inside the hotel's main atrium. He sent the bulk of his gin crew to the penthouse level to secure a vantage point. I want McCready's team to take up positions overlooking the atrium and make the arrest. Jensen, you're going in solo from the roof. My objectives? Keep the gin from joining the party. As far as we can tell, only one route connects the atrium to the penthouse level, a halfway decent elevator shaft. Here. I want you to block access to it. Fine. Just cut me loose. Do you plan on relying solely on your augments for this one? I'd recommend taking a little hardware, just to be sure. got a UC in there. Might be easier to maintain his cuff if he's not the only one still breathing when this is done. Smart thinking. Yeah, but if anything does happen to him, you'll be telling his wife. After you get out of the hospital, of course. What about range? There's lots of wide spaces and high ceilings in there, but a number of tight and constrained rooms too. So it's a crapshoot, really. I'm not looking to play dice with anyone in there. Give me something with distance. Your call. Less chance of being seen and compromising Singh that way. One last thing, Jensen. Singh said that Jin are using some sort of portable Wi-Fi device to boost communications. He's got a better chance of maintaining cover if you disable it. I'll keep an eye out for it. But aren't we on the clock here? You said there's a sandstorm moving in. There is, and we got the intel on this mission at the very last minute. So we're scrambling a little. If it comes to it, your number one priority is keeping the gin out of that atrium. Copy that. Time to put away your happy thoughts, gentlemen. We're approaching the target building. You're up first, Jensen. Let's do this. Team leader Jensen, I'm on the roof. Roger that.
What's wrong? You should enjoy it, McCready. They have colors and shapes. Just remember, red means bad.
initiated. Access granted. I'll do another sweep in the area, just to make sure. Granted.
No parts, but I take mine with cream and two shines while you're asking. Working my way through the penthouses.
Roger that. 